It's not often that a single player generates so much attention that every pro wants them on their team. Orgs are willing to spend thousands of dollars just to make it happen. Especially when he's never competed in the ALGS Pro League before. So let me show you how a 17 year old is raising the bar of Apex Mechanics and in under one year became the number one prospect in Apex Legends. I try to aim for like aimbot. Five years ago, Poifel was just a 12-year-old kid casually playing Apex for the first time. Even though I like played Apex like first day, I definitely like quit the game. I was like really huge on Fortnite. Fortnite was like really fun. But then I came back like season seven, I think. Because of his older brothers, Koi grew up playing games like Call of Duty Black Ops 2. And it was a fan of Optic Gaming. Well, since I'm from like Texas, I like always watched Optic. I think I just got like my hunger for like competitive watching Scump all the time and just seeing how like how good he was on Optic and how he just like won everything. When he came back to Apex, he realized that he was quite ahead of the competition. So he started putting hours in grinding to be at the top of the ranked leaderboards. If you played Apex back in season 13, you would know that it's widely agreed to be the toughest rank system to ever exist in the game. And Koi wasn't just the first to hit Predator on Xbox, but finished the season at number two. This was enough for Koi and his friends to want to take it to the next level. First got my PC, I definitely just like had the mindset of like only playing Apex and just like trying to play competitively. I've never seen you lose this. So in March of 2023, Weifel's team registered for the Challenger Circuit, Apex's Tier 2 Pro Circuit that gives teams the opportunity to qualify for the final World Championship play. They're away. They have triple reds to work with. They have plenty of artillery, it looks like, but maybe not a whole lot of ammo. I think that's seven bullets on a double light set up there for Koi. Well, so. making sure that Hot Dog can't push them for free. However, from the height, it's never been easier to jump down. Lonely fans get the shield swap, but not in time. And Hot Dog come out with the win. Having zero prior comp experience, Koi's team was doing very good, finishing second place in back-to-back -back weekends. And he was displaying a mechanical skill level above that of even tier one pro players. It's common to see controller players with the ability to one clip, but the consistency of Koi's aim and his natural instincts in fights could only be compared to specific top players in the scene. In this time, Koi full met Slayer, a player that just made Pro League for the first time during the year three split two regular season. Slayer noticed Koi's talent before anyone else in the scene, and on the last day of Pro League, decided to let Koi get some tier one experience, which he could take back to Challenger Circuit. I didn't sub, because he just asked me to like play for like one day, and I was just like, might as well, since I was playing in like see like the experience would be good. He knew that Koi deserved to be playing with the best of the best and started using his connections to get Koi a spot on a tier one team. I subbed in that day for Slayer and then Slayer vouched for me for Meat. At the time, Meat Lovers, helmed by veteran pro player Tech, was trialing for thirds and Slayer got Koi the opportunity to scrim with him. But Tech was still just like trialing other thirds and stuff and he didn't like decide to go with me. Slayer saw that, Lou hit Slayer up and he was like asking him for like suggestions like who should be our third? Do you know like anybody that's good and who should we like pick up? And so Slayer vouched for me there. So without wasting any time, he connected Koifel to Lou and Duplex. Vetted pros with lots of experience, but they missed the split two playoffs and were in need of a third to help them qualify for the year three championship. Because of Slayer's vouch, they picked up Koifel for the final weekend of the Challenger circuit. And this is when everything changed. I'm jumping on the third floor, in third floor. That's, that's one. I'm in third floor. I need help, man. You win this girl, you win this. You got my shield, you got my shield. Nice, last guy, last guy. You fucking shit on them. Back, go in the back. Thinking you're not down, okay? Hold me. Let's nice. fucking go, Koi. And the ult. Two on the right still. They're, they're, they're scared, Koi, they're scared. <laughs> you win, bro, you win. You win. The highlights Koi was pulling off weren't just against random players that signed up. He was pulling off unbelievable clutches against pro league level players like Designful, Timmy, Funk, and more. Nice, nice. Good to meet Koi. Watch out, you're getting shot right here. New team, new team, new team. Yeah, get full cash, bro. Get full Nice. Oh my god, bro. You might be able to res me here, Koi. Hey, up. I got a shield here. Yeah, just show, just show. Queue it up. Oh my god, oh my god! 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 Oh my god, oh my god!
And although he was relatively unknown in competitive Apex, Koi's performance had the entire professional scene buzzing. This caught the attention of teams already qualified for the Year 3 Championship LAN. And nine days after that challenger circuit with Dupe and Lou, Koi was officially picked up and signed to Sentinels. Koi full fresh to the main stage as well, looking to be the name we're talking about when we get to the end. I got In a matter of four months, Koi went from joining Challenger Circuit for the first time to performing at Apex's largest tournament. Koi looked like a seasoned pro, leading Sentinels and kills through the group stages as if he's been doing this for years. But remember, he's never even been in pro league. And then, in the first game of the winner's bracket, Koi solidified himself as the top emerging talent oh in the God, scene. Another one for Koi, oh, are you kidding me? Koi, yeah! oh, are you kidding me? Oh my God. Oh my god! Goyful, are you kidding oh me? Oh my god, Sentinels just cleared out three teams! Goyful, nuclear! And here comes Optic! Oh my goodness, Goyful, looking for the win now, baby! Three back-to-back -back one clips the horizon. Oh my god, drop with the knock on the RKN. 2v2, 2v2! 2v2, give me two! Goyful with another one clip! Okay, give me a second, give me a second. No, wait, wait, wait. Sentinels come through! This kid's not real. This kid's not real. Almost seven one clips back to back to back to back to back to back for Koifel. That might have been one of the best end games we have ever seen from an individual player when it comes to oh clutchness. Unfortunately, God. though, this is where Sentinels run at champs would peak as they dropped the loser's bracket and didn't make finals. Despite this, Koifel in his first tier one pro experience placed top 10 for kills and averaged the fourth most kills per round. Yet the personal accomplishments is not what he had his eyes set on. I guess like having that many kills from going from like CC to champs did give me like a confidence boost, but it's like nothing to get like excited over because we obviously didn't make finals. So it was just like, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm still like nowhere near like as good as I want to be and we didn't make finals. So, I mean, there's just still like a lot more to work on, just like me, myself. When the off season began, Apex roster changes went wild. Long standing teams were breaking up and big orgs were leaving Apex. But this meant there was opportunities open to play with some pretty big teams. And the community absolutely erupted when RKN, the IGL of Sentinels, posted a looking for team tweet. Immediately, everyone was wondering what was happening with Koifel. He went silent for days, but quite soon we were about to find yeah. out. Koi began trialing with Sweet and Nathan. Two members of the former energy roster and sweet is arguably the top two most recognizable pro player in the scene nice good job oh my god we just had to kill all nine of them what the fuck was that they were looking great in scrims and everyone thought this is where koi would land but he wasn't committing right away he knew his worth now and that he was the number one prospect on the market. He could play anywhere he wanted. So as much as teams were trialing Koifel, Koifel was trialing IGLs to find the best fit for his playstyle. Oh my shit! <laughs> And that's when he joined in for scrims with Exa. Exet fit exactly what Koifel was looking for. I mean, for like a roller player like me who just like wants to kill everything, IGL like knock, just like enabling me is like ideal. Just like lets me like call fights and like micro us, like take our positions and just like- I can trust my team to IGL if they need if need, if need be. Like if I'm dead, I can trust them to take over comms. Like Bonnie and Koi can definitely co-IGL together. I'm going to pick that, this that, that, Oh my god, how is Koifel getting knocks? I'm with you, I'm with you. Kid is fucking dirty. 
Bro, oh, the communication from Koi. Like me personally, I wanted a play style that I at least like got to play like a little bit of edge into where I could like actually fight with loot. That's what Knock gave me, I guess, coming from like Sky West and Trials into where I could literally just like kill any team I want. But I mean, obviously I'm like, I'm fine with playing zone. That's what we do on Stonepoint. And when I asked Nocturnal what separates Koifel from other players in the scene, his answer was quite interesting. Most of the time, Koifel is just like a fresh voice. He's uh, speaks out in in-game. He tries his best every single game possible, even when like we're dicking around. He tries his best. The willingness to learn. Like there's no ego involved with him. There's no ego. There's no like, I, if I shit talk him and I joke with him, like he's, he's like, dude, say sorry. Like, come on, man. Like I hit so many shots, so many shots in one shot. Okay, I need to stop vlogging about damage. Okay, come back. Dude, I'm not gaslighting you. I'm straight up lying to you. He just wants to show up and win. And that's like, that's what I love. Very young, very brand new and incredibly talented. Like if this is like the baseline for Koi, if there's like, we can add on to him, we harden his skin and like make him even better. That's going to be scary as fuck. And like, it's interesting. So it's like, it's funny that you kind of like, went straight to pointing out more of like his character and like his personality the things that aren't so tangible like not everyone's gonna come in with well like, it is the fucking mechanics well, too. Like, those... he, he, he is a freak too yeah yeah mechanics are obviously important Koifel's fighting iq is far ahead of the curve when it comes to positioning of fights his ability to strafe and mirror strafe is above the average pro it's almost instinctual and obviously he has his aim i mean look at this clip here and his speed to process information as he hears fun call the conduit is low to switch targets and focus her first for the clutch Kill them! Oh, no! no way we just won! <laughs> Mechanics wise, there's like literally like always room for improvement. Like there's like like I know like how like ridiculous this is gonna sound, but I try to aim for like aimbot. Basically just like aimbot. But pro teams at the level of Xset are looking for those personal qualities only a few competitors have. He doesn't even need to be mechanically intensive, but he we're just lucky to have him like that. If he just plays with the team, we'll win every single team fight. Maybe like 95 out of hundred, realistically, we shouldn't lose team fights at this point. This team was also an absolute powerhouse in year three. They have an accomplished IGL in Nocturnal, one of the best mouse and keyboard players in Fun FPS, and a top two to three coach in Hodson. At this point, it was the worst kept secret in Apex that Koifel would soon be signed to X. With Nock, Fun, and like Hodsick, what they like, the environment they give out, it's like, it's like so healthy. Unlike other IGLs, Nock doesn't really like yell at me. He like, he like, he like understands the mistakes I make, and it's just, he's just like, yeah, we could work on that. This beacon and we, we boon. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did I give you guys permission to laugh? Sorry, sir. All right, what do we do from here, Nock? <laughs> and I want to be clear, Koi wasn't just a free agent. He had a bio, which means these teams were willing to spend thousands of dollars just to acquire him. And that shows you the value that this player could bring. With Koifel, Exit has been dominating the scrims leading up to Pro League. After a weak performance at Champs, they are hungry to prove themselves this year and go for the win. Now I'm ready to win everything and I'm no longer just being complacent. I'm ready to take the risks and to be aggressive and to do everything I can to win, so. So with the beginning of the year four ALGS Pro League, all eyes will be on them and the young gun Koifel. It's exciting to see how this story will unfold. So can this new trio finally accomplish the pinnacle goal of winning at LAN? And if you enjoyed this story, you'll also enjoy a very similar story about how another 18 year old was changing Apex Legends.